On this episode of Training Camp with Coach Jimmy, we talk priorities, how do you make them, creating more hours in your day, and how being an offensive football team can be the key to a successful business. Stay tuned. Every day that you start and say, regardless of what happens today, I win, you live with nothing to lose. And when you live with nothing to lose, you are unstoppable. Hey there, and welcome to Training Camp with Coach Jimmy, where we give you the secret home business tips from the pros. And I'm stoked about kicking this series off with two very good friends of mine, um, giants in the industry. And when I say giants, I don't mean gigantic people, but their performance and their hearts. They're really good people. And so when I wanted to kick this off, I was like, I wanted to do this right. I wanted to bring you value and people that I knew had a big message, but would give you some actual tips, some things to take away uh, from this episode. So first and foremost, they are they have earned multi, multi-million dollars with their home-based business. Uh, neither had a background in this type of business, uh, and they'll, you'll hear a little bit more of their story here in just a second. Um, they're coming to you live from their beautiful new home in Coronado, California. Help me welcome Dave and Monica Ward. Thank you guys for uh, joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Awesome. Well, I just want to jump right in here, and, and for the people that are watching, can you give us a little bit of what you guys, what your backgrounds were career-wise before you started your home-based business? Monica, why don't you start? All right. Well, I was an elementary school teacher, and I taught for 12 years before I decided to start a home-based business. Awesome. What about you, Dave? Uh, I was a lawyer, uh, and I practiced for about 10 years. Uh, Monica was in the business before I was. I think that's probably pretty common. We'll probably talk a little bit about being spouses in a business together. Uh, and she was having fun, and I wasn't. So I had to change that. <laughs> well, and the things that we're going to touch on today are definitely setting priorities, time management skills, and this concept that, you know, when I was talking to the wards before we started, this concept of buying your career back that we'll get to here in a little bit. But I just want to start right where you kind of left off there, Dave. Was this something that you both jumped into together and were both on board with initially? No, actually, it really wasn't. Um, you know, when Monica first came up with the idea to start a home-based business, I thought she was nuts. And, and I thought, oh, it's this huge time, um, you know, a huge time waster, as I saw it at the time. And, you know, this is going to take away from things like cooking dinner and, um, and you know, doing my laundry and, you know, the normal sort of slave behaviors <laughs> that women are subjected to. <laughs> um, so, no, in the beginning, we, I, I wasn't really on board, but I let Monica talk a little bit about the beginning. Yeah, what was appealing to you, Monica, to start as a teacher that, that you saw well, something like I could do this? So, so my situation changed for, like, what happened was I used to like to teach um, elementary, like summer school, mm -hmm. and then when my kids were born, I didn't have the freedom and flexibility to, if I decided to take on summer school, I would have to find a babysitter for them because they weren't going to be able to continue on in, in child care, and I'd have to, um, so I'd have to deduct any earnings, like any of those costs from the earnings and I missed them terribly mm -hmm. during the school year, during the school day and I didn't want to be away from them. So I liked the idea of starting a home-based business because it was something that I could squeeze in like during hours that wouldn't interfere with his laundry or <laughs> cooking his dinner and even uh, reading to my children and all the things that matter to us. I know we're, we're poking fun at this situation but no. yeah, no. But I think I that's great be, well, because the people that are watching this probably either are in a home-based business or maybe they're thinking about it. And time is a big bugaboo, right? The, the promise of starting something at home a lot of times is start a business that you can build part-time and gain your freedom back. Yet we hear over and over and over again that time management is this issue because, you know, they're working a career and then they're coming home when they're supposed to be spending time with their family and they're taking away from that. So what have you guys found as far as maybe some time management tips, uh, maybe mistakes that you made early, and how did you correct those to preserve your marriage, most of all, but then also, <laughs> but then also um, have success with the business? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for, for, from my perspective anyway, Monica is really the expert at this. I, you know, I, I tend to be a workaholic, and I'll 
or, 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 and um, Monica's a lot more um, grounded and, and, and really clear about priorities, and, and that's been really good for me to have a business partner who's that way. Um, so why don't you talk a little bit about priorities and kind of how you do that and how you keep us on track to have a balanced life rather than just work all the time. <laughs> I'm grounded. No, I'm more social, and I need to be around people, and I need to connect, so... Um, obviously that starts with our family and then I love to hang around with friends and our extended family now we happen to live like one mile from his parents my parents his grandparents so everybody matters and um, you sort of, we want to make time for everything for physical activity for getting out having having fun mm -hmm. and the way that I do it is and and I wasn't doing it at first was at first I just sort of let whatever invite came my way or I, you know, I would accept it. I would take on too much mm -hmm. and so then I would have these obligations. They're really not obligations obviously with your home-based business but these desires to create a certain goal or income out of the home-based business and then I would accept a three-hour lunch date with a girlfriend. Mm. when I had technically wrote them in as work hours. So um, I started needing to stick to a schedule mm -hmm. just like I would be obligated to if I worked for the man. Right. And I wrote out, I looked at my week at a glance. It, I love the vertical week at a glance calendar. I'm a total paper pencil yeah. girl and I would just write in valuable dates. Like if I wanted to spend time with my grandmother or, or a girlfriend or go out, see a movie, I would schedule those things in. Um, other things, I would um, schedule days to get the laundry done. I didn't have to have a completely empty laundry basket. I mean, it was more important to me to be able to buy those important moments of our time than consistently always having everything finished. And then, you know, I... I just so I just prioritized. I was like, there's a time and a place for everything. I don't have to catch my favorite television show at the hour that it airs. Mm -hmm. Now everything's genius. You can watch everything. I know it's yeah. even like dated to say DVR it, but you can go online and watch anything at any time or two episodes back to back when you have time if you choose to watch television. Right. Just stay um, off Twitter cuz that's where your that's where your spoilers are going to happen there. So just you have to stay away from the social media. Oh, yeah, right. Right. But I think that's great about, you know, you don't have to do everything every day. So like, you know, if there's a day that we're going to catch up on laundry, maybe that's a day you're not working your home-based business just as hard because I know the trap I used to fall into was I needed to try to do everything every day and and what we do around here now is there are days that are more business oriented and there are days that are more kind of around the house oriented and we try not to over lap those. But Dave, I want to touch on kind of what you mentioned because I think so many people get caught into, they have this big vision for what they want their home-based business to be and maybe they want to get out of a career. You know, obviously you were a successful lawyer, but you found, you know, once you kind of got on board, you saw this as a potential to get out of that, whatever you were dissatisfied with. And maybe you'll touch on that just for a moment. But how do you even now prevent yourself from staying in that work, 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 work mode as you, you know, as we've talked before, literally you could fill up your calendar with things to do in a home-based business all the time. And how do you prevent that from happening? Yeah, I mean, I think once you really get involved and, and start to take ownership of, of a home-based business, you realize that you're an entrepreneur. And, and what that basically means is you're responsible. So if it, if it happens, it's because you did it. If it doesn't happen, it's because you didn't do it. And when you really want to make it happen, it's really tempting to try to work all the time and mm -hmm. when you don't have a, when I was practicing law, you know, they give me one specified task and it was like, okay, go do this. Well, when that was done, you could just go home. <laughs> I could literally sit here and give myself tasks all day long. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of football. <laughs> uh, and nice. I'll just put this plug for the Chargers here for a moment. I'm a big fan of football, so I like, I like football analogies and, and the way I, I think about time management is, is kind of like football. You know, you can spend all of your time on defense. Um, and that's what I think a lot of people do. They're on defense all day long. They're backpedaling. They're constantly spending time in their inbox or on the you know, news feed in Facebook or all these places where other people's agenda come at you, right? Everybody else is on offense. Your inbox is other people's agenda. Mm. Your sent items is your agenda. 
And so people spend all this time stuck playing defense. And so I think with time management, what you have to do is you have to get on offense. You've got to have a plan. And, you know, you can score some points on defense, but you're going to score way more points on offense in mm. football. And it's true with time management as well. So when you sit down and you set a, a set amount of tasks for a given day, every day I start out with a to-do list of items that I want to get done that day. I don't always get all of them done. And some of them I carry over to the next day. Some of them, you know, what happens? Well, gee, all of a sudden there's a turnover on the 10-yard line, and i got to get on defense real quick and put a fire out. Right. That happens. But, you know, you can be intentional about it, and you can, you know, you can get on offense, and you can have a to-do list. And then when I do that, you know, I know my kids get out of school at 3 o'clock. That's when I want to be done working. I don't, I don't want to be working into the 3 to 4 to 5 hours, you know, if the kids have practice or whatever, that's different. But... You know, I want to be off by then. So my job is to get those tasks done and be efficient during the time period that I've set forth to do that. And that gives some urgency. You know, we talked about this is going to be time management and priorities. And obviously, listening to both of you guys, that your family time, time with the kids, that really is um, a priority for you. And I think that when you know, oh, that that 3 o'clock or whatever, that cutoff time, that here's family time starting, um, the urgency in your work hours that, that helps you stay on track, to stay on the offensive. And, you know, maybe you want to just touch real briefly on the concept of being productive over being busy. Because the, I know a lot of people in home-based business that they get to the end of the day and they feel like they've been doing stuff all day. But it's not the stuff that tur- that flips the needle. It's not, you know, adding people to their team. It's not growing their business, but they're exhausted. And h- how do you guys go about figuring out what's busy and what's priority that really actually moves things forward? I don't know, do you have thoughts on that? I do. Okay, go for it. <laughs> and I'm super impressed I even followed your football thing. Nice. I'm not the sports fan. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly but surely, just got to chip away. Yeah, I really think that I'm, it's, a, it's a, just a common practice in a home-based business that um, you are always looking to meet new people and add them to your contact list. You're always looking to invite them to take a look at your product or you're inviting them to take a look at your business opportunity. Um, Then you follow through and you either get them to a decision and you train them properly. Mm -hmm. And, and, and And you're just repeating. So if you sit there and spend a million hours perfecting the flyer and the flyer prevents you while you may come out with the perfect product or or I think the things that I'm seeing people do now is get the really cutesy Instagram like you know um, spending way too much time um, throwing things out there that are not actually touching one individual's yeah. life mm-hmm. um, where they can actually make a positive connection and then from there lead them through a funnel of getting them to a decision so right yeah that is really all you should be doing. And then if, if you wanted to do a little bit of gravy on top that I think is really relevant, it's that personal development side of it. Like yeah. reading, pop, reading things to keep your mind right because you do get no's when you are leading people down um, a decision-making process. You are going to get no's. That can be discouraging. So, you know, definitely you always want to keep yourself positive, optimistic, and understand what your responsibility is. And that is to always be engaged in productive activity like you're talking about, Jimmy, you know. You want to be meeting those new people. So, you know, you're not responsible for their decision, but you are responsible for asking for a decision and presenting the information to them Mm -hmm. so they can make a thoughtful decision. And I think this it's also good to let, you know, the viewer know that you're talking to two individuals here with a very large organization, and I find that as people progress in their home-based business, that they really get into this like management mode, and I think that's so key that you guys both are saying, hey, look, you guys stay in doing the exact same things now you know, with a, a very large organization that you did getting started first. It was engaging with new people. It was establishing those relationships. It was introducing them, giving them an opportunity to look at what it is that you do and see if it's right for them or not. And like I loved what you said about that it's not your responsibility what their what the response is, but that it is our responsibility to to at least present that. And so I, I think that's really good. Also, as as a couple that now works together, obviously you said early on um, it wasn't power couple from day one, 
Um, <laughs> what have you found now working as a couple that makes you guys stronger as a team? Um, I, I guess I'll start on that one, and maybe you've got some thoughts too. I, I think that you know what makes us strong is our differences. Mm-hmm. Is that you know most couples, and I think you know one of the things we always talk to people in personal development is understanding personality types, understanding how to communicate with people. Right. And as we started to do that growth, I think we realized really quickly, wow, we're really different, and and that explains a lot. And it's you know why I do certain things, why she does certain things, and why I'm not very good at certain things, and why Monica's really good at certain things. Right. And I, I think in the beginning, we were able to divide up those responsibilities mm-hmm. and sort of say, okay, you know, I, I'm good at the organization and the task management and project management and those types of things, and Monica's really good at relationships. And so we'll kind of divvy those things up. Um, after a, a while, you know, we sort of capped out at a certain level where it wasn't I had to dive into her area and she had to dive into mine. It was just the only way we were going to grow and get bigger. Right. Um, so I think initially it was definitely playing on our individual strengths and weaknesses and really kind of dividing things up and this divide and conquer sort of, sort of, you know, way to go about things. But that only gets you so far, you know, and, and Monica mentioned personal development earlier. I think that that's been such a huge thing for us and in working together. One of the things that I think has been, unique for us maybe, or maybe not unique is the wrong word, but what's happened for us is that because of the, the way this business works, and for people who are in the home-based business, it's no surprise that your business only grows as much as you do. Mm-hmm. We, we've been required to grow as people, mm-hmm. and because we're business partners, we've grown together. And so I think it's been not just good for our business, but good for our marriage, good for our family. You know, All of those things is really added the business is really added to that. So what do you think? No, I think that you really, that he's absolutely right. And the only advice I would give um, a couple taking on um, the, you know, taking on the, the I guess, the skill sets that make them unique and, right. and, and can really propel their business forward is don't let your ego get in the middle of that because, the fact that he's more organized than I am or the fact that I'm a better people person doesn't make him any less of a person or me any less of a person or right. S any less successful. On the contrary, like that's where gratitude comes in um, and, and, and opportunity for us. So what, like what he was saying, you know, an opportunity to get uncomfortable and to take on like for me, I had to get more organized. I had to get a handle on my schedule. It wasn't organic to me, or I heard the words intrinsic to me to go, you know, dork out. <laughs> I'm saying dork out. Uh, yeah, to set a schedule. But I'll tell you what, when I made the decision to do it, and I resisted it at first, but as I began to embrace it, let go of my ego and say that that being disorganized wasn't wasn't serving me, and I started to stick to my schedule, my life and my joy exploded. So, and I was able to take on more and do more things that were fruitful and exciting and fulfilling for me. That's so, awesome. So yeah. let's say right now, you know, we have somebody that is, they, they've started, uh, maybe, they're, maybe they're new or maybe they've been in their, their home-based business for a little while and they just feel like they're drowning and they don't feel like they haven't been able to get a hold on this this idea of either office hours or when I'm going to work this. Just real quick, what would be like two, three takeaways that they could implement right now uh, to, to maybe at least give themselves a little momentum where they feel better uh, you know, in the next week than they do right now? Uh, I mean, I don't know about two or three, but the most important thing I would say is start small. Like, you know, don't schedule four hours a day of work. Really, what you're doing is dealing with individuals in a home-based business. So each individual is one interaction, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so just take this one individual at a time. So if you need to meet one new person, meet one new person, you know, and walk them through your steps that your home-based business has laid out for you. Mm -hmm. If, and, and, and don't take on any more if that overwhelms you, you know, the only thing that I can tell you with that is your business is going to grow. I didn't come up with this. This is from like your first year in a home-based business. But 
your business is going to grow in direct proportion to the number of people that you interact with, hmm. right? So, so just but just take it one person at a time. Schedule your day in chunks, in smaller chunks. Maybe fifteen minutes, maybe a half an hour, maybe an hour, and then over time you're going to master that one transaction that you have to walk them through and then you'll be able to take on two people and five people and ten people yeah and i think my number one tip for people is don't multitask mm -hmm. we, we have created this monster of multitasking because we have all these little things that distract us and we're trying to do ten things at once your brain can't handle that right your brain just cannot handle that do one thing at a time. Sit down, make a to-do list, and then do one thing at a time. I try, you know, I, I'm notorious for having two browsers open and 19 tabs on each one. And when I'm doing that, inevitably, that is not productive time. And, and if I do get into a productive mode, what happens? I get a message on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, a, a message via Google Chat or something. And, and boom, it's 15 minutes to deal with that because it's some... You know, a person in our organization maybe who's got a problem and they need a fire put out and they need it done now. At least that's the perception I have of it. It's not really true, right. but that's the that's the importance that I place on it. And so instead of doing that, I try to just get you know my email. I try to check it twice a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon. If I'm on Facebook or other social media sites, I'm trying to be posting on Facebook. So again, it's offense versus defense. Mm. You know, you got to be on offense if you're just on you're probably on somebody else's agenda and that's not moving forward with your to-do list and your items so don't multitask pick one task at a time do the one thing at a time and then once it's done you can move on to something else and then if you need to schedule downtime i mean I'm, I'm not telling you that all of my time is super efficient i have time where i just sit here and surf the news feed yeah but i don't count that as you know productive time that's right. busy you know, no, I totally, I totally find that that, that Facebook Messenger um, can be the, the biggest derailer uh, of anything, and, and I love this concept of, maybe it's because I'm just as big a fo football dork, but I love this concept of offense versus defense, because it really is, you know, I, I heard a stat somewhere, uh, and maybe it was Darren Hardy that talked about the, the people that check their inbox within like the first, I think he said like three hours of waking up, like 30, 40% less productive because you're starting your day on somebody else's agenda. So I, I think that's fantastic. Dave, Monica, this has been awesome. I think these tips are fantastic. I think these are actual things that people can apply. They're not just these grandioso concepts. This is like, this is exactly what you do. And I think so many people in home-based businesses, that's exactly what they need. Um, if people are checking this out and they're like, I like this couple, I wanna know more about them. How do I connect with you guys? How can people find you? The best way is through our website, which is www.thefitclubnetwork.com. That's awesome. Thefitclubnetwork.com. You can plug in with these two amazing people, Dave and Monica Ward. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to share your insights and your expertise with you know the rest of us that are working to get where you guys are in your business right now. And uh, I love what I love so much about this industry is so many successful people willing to pay it forward and share exactly what they've done. So, gang, that's it for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to hear the comments and the feedback of how you are applying the things that you learned here and let us know about your success. Remember, if you're digging this show, subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you again real soon. Take care.